just uh, some of our, our local guys. This would be the standard uh, Cincinnati white boy, crazy white boy tattoo. Um, just once again, looking around on Facebook. I mean, don't tell anybody. I got, I got an always tan, and then I can see that guy the next day. What's going to find familiar with what's going on here? I know that this guy is typically the gun guy, so I keep an eye on him. If I pull up, I see him. Truck starts to walk away. I'm going to make the assumption that he's the guy carrying the gun and have him stop, so then we can address that. Drugs are always an issue. Uh, there's a few areas uh, in this little area that I was looking at, probably three or four main places where everybody seemed to stand, that I felt that if I could address them, it would make a very large impact in the neighborhood. I was initially told that this was a daycare. Um, if it is, if you have a child there, I highly recommend that you leave this meeting now and go pick up your child. Um, it was the main hangout for everybody that I knew to be a drug dealer before going to this area. So I knew them from South Collinsville, I knew them from Bay Apartments, I knew them from over the Rhine or the West End. They were known throughout the city as drug traffickers. Typically a little higher up even. And they're, they're right there in this location hanging out together. All, essentially all that. So with this, I, I'm contacting business owners. I'm, I'm partnering up with Vice. Really all I need is if I can get one CI to do one buy on that property, I can put the pressure on the property owner to evict that person. And you kind of just keep doing that until you have residents that aren't selling drugs. Uh, it's also partnering with the uh, city law department. Like I said, you're, you're connecting a lot of resources with these teams. It's, it's not just police stuff, it's law stuff, it's building inspections, it's health inspections. Similar setup, this was another one where they were all sitting out in front that, that was identified. Uh, same situation. Same situation here. Uh, already made agreements with the, the property owner. There's already been several evictions. The right of entry letter is now on file, which means there's somebody sitting on that step and they're not with a resident. Well, now you're trespassing, here's your ticket. And eventually that gets very annoying to people, especially since you're going to KB, you can have warrants for based off these trespassing. So next time I stop you, I know you're out there selling drugs, you have a trespass ticket. I'm not just trying to get a ticket anymore. Now I'm going through pockets because you're under arrest, and now they're getting extra charges, and now they don't want to get stupid anymore. I uh, blocked them for their for their sake because they're ongoing investigations. Um, another example, I don't know if you can see the date, this is 527, uh, so two days ago. Uh, this would be on Stabler Street. Another thing that's going to come hand in hand with drug trafficking. So you have the car pull up. This gentleman, I don't know if you can tell it's in his hand, but that would be an 8847. The other gentleman who gets out of the car, you can see the uh, muzzle flash. He's, he's going old school with the basic handgun, but you have a lot of this uh, whenever there's drug trafficking. There's going to be fighting over who owns that corner or trying to rob people. These people try to sneak up on another group of guys, which were standing right about here. Um, they were alerted, luckily, before these gentlemen got too close and they had to just kind of open fire from a distance. When you open fire from a distance, the residents wake up and all the cars kind of look like this. So that's kind of frustrating in and of itself. So you can, you can tell this is going to be an exit wound because it went straight through the back of the van all the way out the front. So I'm guessing it's the, uh, the work of that AK. But there were probably six or seven cars that I was flagged down for that morning that all had bullet holes throughout them. It's also, a, I mean, that end of the street is going to be more of their school. Um, so you have a school right down there as well that you're also dealing with. So there's plenty of children around. If you go right down the street to the right of your park, in the water area, uh, that whole street is typically small children. And this, this happened around 10 p.m. So I mean, it's not even super late. There's a high probability that there's still going to be some kids standing around on the front porch or whatever else. And very easily could have been one of them. Another thing that I look at is public gaming. A lot of people don't address public gaming too hard. I, I'm not a fan of it myself because it's, it's typically how the time is passed when you're standing out on a corner. So if you're standing out on a corner all day, you kind of get bored and you have a lot of low denomination bills, whatever else. So you start throwing dice for that. That's, that's typically how it works. And I've mentioned several, several homicides that are the result of public gaming. And this 
this area alone, the, the one uh, monument that you will still see uh, set up um, is for Brian Thompson. And the WLWT uh, quote before the story on that day, where this is said, two gunmen ran to Thompson's car to get away. They said the two men had been playing dice down the street and opened fire on two other men involved in the dice game. This is a very common occurrence for shootings. Shootings are either going to be drug related or, unfortunately, the way it seems to be going, dice related. It's, it's very common. Uh, and we, we do have a public gaming code. It's very easy to enforce. You can't play any game with chance um, on the sidewalk, essentially. So it, it's very easy to do. Another uh, method that I, I'm using in this particular neighborhood is our uh, citywide neighborhood public safety cameras. I don't know if you're familiar with the city cameras. Uh, this top camera is on top of Queens Tower. So all the way up on Queens Tower looking down at the neighborhood. This is me just zooming in that same camera. So they're very effective and they're very powerful. And what this does is this kind of establishes line of sight. Each one of our cameras that we place has to be in basically line of sight to another camera. So they have to be able to see each other and be able to transfer a lot of wireless and base and everything else. So I partnered with Brickstone and now Lehman Storage is getting one of these beauties placed up on the, uh, the rooftop at the corner. Um, main thing is it, it's going to be a deterrent. It, it's a huge deterrent and it's, it's, it's great. Uh, evidence gather. So we're going to be able to control this, we're going to be able to look at whoever we want. I'm going to be able to sit at my desk, watch that, and just tell Vice who to So we can do that all. You mentioned the flight index. We have a lot of buildings that look like this in the neighborhood. Uh, things that you don't want next door to you. Things that, this is where we get into a lot more of the quality of life element. The, it's not a part one crime. It's, you, it's what you hate to see when you look out your window. That really you know, drives you insane. That's what we're kind of dealing with a lot more than any other. Either. So you don't want this. This neighborhood is a little difficult to deal with, but it gets to the point that they're so used to it that you can open an actual junkyard in the middle of a residential street. And a lot of it's so residential, and it seems to go overlooked because it's gotten to that point. And the health code inspectors and building code inspectors should be actually at this property. Possibly now they're supposed to go out within, within today or the next day. So. Another example of it's hard to see, it's just additional dumping grounds that they use. Uh, dumping is another issue that, that we're partnering with. Board of Health health inspectors to, to address. Broken windows, boarding up, getting everything boarded up so that it can't be used for uh, heroin house in the central. Additional dump sites. And we're getting decent progress, uh, even initially. Uh, simple contacts to a business owner. I mean, it's going from this to this, you know, typically within a couple of days. So they are working with us. It's like, well, I don't know if you guys are aware, even like a weeds are over 12 inches that side of them. That's a $350 ticket. So once you get one of those posted to your door, the grass tends to get mowed pretty pretty quickly. And our litter inspections are more health. They've, they've been very cooperative with this group. So another example, put a call in, it looks like that the next day. That's much better. I can tolerate that. This one's still a mess. This one, I don't know if you can tell, back left corner, well, this is a, a torn up mattress. Then you have a reclining chair, another mattress, an additional chair here, I think there was a chair in the walkway. Once one chair gets out there, it becomes safe for everybody to put their chair there. So everybody just throws their mattress, whatever it is they have, in the, the big empty lot. So that's a zoom in, left to right, much better on the right hand side, obviously. Once again, it's a matter of just getting that citation getting the word out, getting the, uh, the property owner out responsible. Another plane up in the back area with the additional chairs and the mattresses. Once again, put a notice, a $350 notice that your, your grass is too long and gets cut essentially within a couple of days. And like I said, it is about partnering with people. 
they do have good groups that are still there and willing to help in that area. Santa Maria is down there. Um, they're putting on everything from neighborhood concerts, or like I think they're going that every other Wednesday throughout the summer. Um, they're offering all kinds of off-the-street programs for the kids, education programs. Uh, they're doing a bit of everything. We're getting the same uh, assistance for Black Ministries. Black Ministries is down there. They've been, they've been incredibly helpful. San Marias to another. Uh, youth development with after school, health and wellness programs, early child development programs, block parties. I mean, I mean they're doing a bunch. And then Black Ministries is, is doing a lot of the same. Uh, we were brought to Black Ministries because uh, their Weightless Acre program goes hand in hand with our, our, our prostitution program. So I, I, know, I know there's at least one person here that was with uh, off the streets. So I don't know. I don't know if you have any. Yeah. You deal with women's anger. Yeah. So Block Block Ministries in general has has been a great partner. Uh, they just opened up uh, Block and Pizza. It's the only restaurant in the neighborhood. So people down there are pretty excited. It, there's just not much in that neighborhood to be excited about. You have Block and Pizza there. You have a corner store. Those are your businesses, other than the junkyards. Doing something else. 